Science of Regeneration. In a previous folio, we considered nutritional methods of intestinal regeneration. In another, we considered nutritional methods of blood regeneration. The next higher stage in the process of physiological regeneration is endocrine regeneration, which we shall consider in this folio. It is well known that the endocrine glands are the controllers of our physical and mental destiny, our health, our virility, our intelligence, and our lifespan. There is evidence that old age is due to the degeneration of the endocrine glands. If youth could be restored, it could be achieved only through the regeneration of these glands. It is the purpose of this study course to present practical methods by which such regeneration may be brought about, leading to a renewal of youth and a prolongation of life. Modern researches have shown that the endocrine glands compose a chain, each influencing the other through the hormones they produce, and that the master glands which control all the others are the gonads, or the sex glands. As one endocrinologist expressed it, I have not swerved from my original conception that the source of all human energy is sex energy, which is another way of saying that the glandular system of man is a chain system, or series of connected loops, mutually assisting and depressing each other by their secretions, of which the genital glands would seem to have the power of most directly stimulating, and in a measure dominating, the human body and mind by their particular kind of hormones manufactured by the sex glands and distributed in the bloodstream for the nourishment of all tissues of the body. The tendency of modern endocrinologists is to sharply differentiate between the function of the external and internal secretion of the gonads in respect to the part played by their hormones in the circulation of the blood, giving the whole credit, or the major part of the credit, of the noted upbuilding of the body as a whole, its glandular, nervous, muscular and vegetative systems to the activity of the interstitial glands, apart from the hormones of the external secretory process. But this is by no means my own conclusion. It is briefly my view that both the external and internal secretions of the gonads, sex glands collectively, are equally valuable to the upbuilding of body tissue, and that the gonads themselves are not merely a link in the chain of endocrines, so that, defective thyroids can be most easily repaired by repair of the gonads, and so with all the glands of the chain. I have demonstrated fairly that the position of the gonads in the chain of the endocrines is the master position, and that the well-being of all the endocrines is exactly dependent upon the well-being of the gonads. During old age, the endocrine glands are found in a state of degeneration. According to Dr. Sokoloff, old age itself is a product of such endocrine degeneration, brought on by autointoxication. Professor Mechnikov also claimed that senility is a product of autointoxication which he traced to intestinal putrefaction. There is, however, another principal cause of premature old age and its accompanying endocrine degeneration, and this is the exhaustion and failure of the gonads and their incapacity to supply the blood with life-giving sex hormones on which the vitality and normal functioning of all cells and organs of the body depend. This is clearly shown by the case of the eunuch, or the castrated individual, whose bloodstream lacks these precious hormones. Eunuchs, as is well known, grow old at an age when normal individuals are still young, their endocrine glands prematurely degenerate, leading to the appearance of the signs of old age, due to the failure of the gonads to supply the blood with sufficient sex hormones, the final result of lack of sex hormones is death. In other words, the sex hormones are the sources of vital energy. They activate the hormone secretory activity of the other endocrine glands, for the sex glands may be compared to a conductor of the endocrine orchestra, which produces the music that is our life, personality and mentality. It is therefore of supreme importance to all who wish to increase the tides of their physical and mental vitality to the utmost to see to it that sex hormones, in their entirety, are conserved in the bloodstream, where they belong, acting as general cellular nutrients, especially for nerve, brain and endocrine tissues and that they are not lost through the external secretory process. For it is now a proven fact that sex hormones are present in the semen and are lost with it, and here we find the basic cause of sex hormone deficiency, which reaches its climax in the climacteric, followed by a degeneration of the gonads and other endocrine glands, and the appearance of the signs of old age. That this is the case is indicated by the Steinach operation for the rejuvenation of men. This operation consists in the ligature of the vas deferens, i.e., the cutting and tying of the efferent duct through which testicular secretions must pass in order to leave the body. 
Through this operation, the individual is forced to retain all of his tentacular fluids, as well as the sex hormones they contain. These are reabsorbed into the bloodstream as fast as they are formed. Individuals thus operated upon are rendered sterile, but not impotent. Their gonads continue to function and to enrich the blood with their precious sex hormones, which, in this case, are not lost through external secretion, but completely conserved. Professor Steinach, the noted Austrian endocrinologist, found that both animals and humans who were thus operated upon were rejuvenated. Old rats, whose hair was falling out and who were losing their hold on life were in this way transformed into young-looking animals with a new coat of glossy hair and with new youthful virility. Steinach found that a remarkable regeneration of all the endocrine glands took place as a result of the conservation and increased supply of sex hormones which his operation brought about. Here he found the real secret of youth. But the same results as Professor Steinach achieved by his operation, whose effect was to make the individual permanently continent by preventing the escape of testicular secretions from the body, can be achieved without need of any operation. The researches of Dr. Francis G. Benedict of the Carnegie Institute of Washington, on nutritional control over gonad functioning, which we shall consider later in this course, shows how this may be easily accomplished.